blah, blah, blah. But I, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. Kid, he's the landowner of the grandson. We'll go down here. We can touch the blind right up here. There's a little bed. little south in that window, right? Yeah, should be. Okay, so yep. right, hit them off the corner there. Yep, I think we're set, set the blind. They're right coming here. from the south, southeast. Yep. Yep. But yeah, we'll, we'll string out the decoys. Yep. Throw a little hook out here for them to come into. Things will be good. All right, it's our second morning here in West Texas with five land and holding. Excited about this morning's hunt. It's a winter wheat field. Joe saw this last night. I didn't see it, but uh, there's a hunter, huntable amount of birds in here. I'm not gonna say it's loaded by any means, but uh, definitely enough, it's worth our time to set up on. Uh, got a little, a little bit more wind here so far this morning, not a lot, but it's definitely gonna pick up later this afternoon. Don't forget, we've only got a few more days for you to win that trip with us in Missouri with Valley Oaks. And we're gonna be hunting the first week of February. It'll be a trip for you and your friend, and we'll cover, cover everything. Subscribe to the Heartland Waterfowl YouTube channel, like, these videos, comment on these videos and go to huntingwithhw.com to fill out your information. We're gonna draw that winner here in just a couple days. Stay tuned, more to come. Day two, West Texas, five landing holding. Here we go. Yeah, so I'm not real sure what's going on, but sounds like we got permission or we thought we had had permission on this, but the guy just rolled in claiming to be the landowner's grandson and he's telling us he doesn't want us to be in here, so I'm not real sure what's going on, but we've already got pretty much half the decoy set up, two of the blinds. Joe's talking to him right now. So we're all kind of like in pause mode until we actually understand what's going on here. Uh, you waterfowl enough, waterfowl hunt enough, sometimes you're gonna run into these predicaments where you, there's a communication error on what we're, Him. He's like, oh, it's a family deal. He was like, we were gonna set up right here. He's like, I didn't realize Mr. Herman was letting anybody hunt, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. Kid, he's the landowner of the grandson. What's plan B? We'll go down here, two miles, set up Mr. Herman does. Yeah, I mean, I- What about uh, to the east of that Milo field? Off that pump jack. We're off the roost. Think that'd be better or no? Not really. I don't, but. Okay, well, we gotta book it over there, right? Yep. Dude. No bueno. Was he being a prick? No, the, the one, the driver was, the kid sitting in the passenger seat wasn't. But he's like, how many of these guys are paying you? I said, none of them. I said, this is a buddy deal. I said, we're filming a TV show, dude. So yeah. we hunted yesterday, shot four. But uh, we gotta get picked up. We gotta All we right. gotta go to Let's go. We gotta go to plan B. What do you do? Smile. It's always the landowner's grandson's brother's mother's permission. On on the father's side. Not the mother's side. We didn't get them. <laughs> We're gonna wrap this up. We didn't even fire around this morning. <sighs> Obviously, we did not hunt where we wanted to hunt this morning. And so we had to go to plan B, and plan B was no bueno. So it's 9.45 and even though these birds have been flying late, we're just not very optimistic that if we sit this out any longer that it's gonna be worth anything. Plus the wind's gonna start whipping at 40 miles per hour here in the next couple hours. And so we wanna go scout before, cause the scout's not gonna be worth a darn this afternoon trying to scout in that wind. So we're gonna go out and try to get a more, you know, late morning scout, get this packed up and then get back and then 
those birds that we shot yesterday, Kate's going to whip up uh, our favorite crane pot pie. So stay tuned, more to come. Just got back from scouting this afternoon. We have been coming down here for 10 years now, and one of our favorite things to do is have crane crane pot pie that Kate makes us. So Kate's been making this forever now. Um, one of our favorite things to eat, you guys can eat this with duck, geese, pheasants, whatever wild game you want to eat it with. But great recipe for anything. We love the crane just because this is where we've had it forever now, 10 years. So um, she's going to go through this recipe and show you how to do it because I have no idea how to. First, after you get the crane back, you got to trim all the silver skin off. And then we like to take the crane and put it in some salt wash to let the blood get out. And then I like to season it with the big game rub before we throw it on the Traeger to get it like medium rare before you throw it in your crane pot pie. Once you get your crane on the Traeger, uh, I like to have my cast iron casserole dish, whatever you need, already greased. And then I lined it with just one pie crust, depending how big you're making it. You use one, two, three, whatever. And then you have your celery, carrots, potatoes, whatever vegetables you want. Some people like mushrooms and stuff like that. Uh, and then we'll chop it all up and we'll throw it in the cast iron. Boom. Yeah. Here's my thing. Now that we've got all the veggies cut up and put in, um, I like to season it after. So my go-to is the veggie rub by Traeger. It's the best. Uh, so I use that and just sprinkle it all over. And you can use a generous amount or whatever you think is suffice for like your pot pie. Garlic salt. Just black pepper. And then Worcestershire sauce and beef broth. And so I like to take the Worcestershire and just kind of another generous amount all over. And then the beef broth, I usually fill it to the top because the potatoes will soak it all up. Sometimes you need one, sometimes you have to have two. It just depends what size pie you're making. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the cranes off, let them rest for a minute, chop them up, and then throw them back on the pot pie. This is about the second to last step to the pot pie. Put the crane back in, let it keep cooking, then uh, put that pie crust on. When it gets a little closer to done, the veggies start getting soft. That's about it. All right, pot pie's been on here for about an hour. The veggies are done. Go in, put that, put that pie crust on top. Have Kate give it that egg wash. And then we'll put it back on. All right, so now we pulled the crane off the trigger. We're gonna put the crust on top. So we're just gonna put the crust on top and then a little bit of butter and garlic and a little egg wash. And then we're gonna throw it back on the trigger till the crust is done. All right, so I pulled it off the trigger just to let it go in the oven just a little bit longer so we can get the top nice and crusted with the broil. And now it's ready to serve. Perfect cream pop up. Yeah. We wake up. That was a chip. It's incredible. Kate, this is uh, crane? Yes. Wow, and it's so hot. Good. Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 